Next part of the part number is the gauge pattern. This particular one is a BG. Uh, back in the early days when the company was started, um, this would mean basically you had the G version of the B pattern. Uh, today, really, there's so many different gauge patterns available that basically we just memorize um, what they are. I know that a BG is a linear pattern, that the grid is twice as long as it is wide, but that's not so critical. Uh, what is critical is to make sure that you select the right type of gauge pattern for your application. And let's talk about those. Uh, the pattern you see all the way to the left, that's a linear gauge. Linear or sometimes referred to as a uniaxial. It's by far the most common uh, gauge pattern that's used in experimental testing, but it doesn't always fit the application. Some cases you may find like a thin walled pressure vessel uh, where you've got a biaxial stress state. And if you've got a biaxial stress state, in order to be able to calculate those stresses accurately, you really need to be using a T-rosette. That's the next one. The T-rosette has two sensitive grids, 190 degrees to the other. Now you could take two linear gauges and turn 190 degrees to the other and that would work, but there's gonna be a little bit of error or uncertainty in your ability to get 190 degrees to the other as opposed to this T-rosette, which is gonna be a very, very accurate etching of those grids, one perpendicular to the other. Much more so, much more accurate than what you or I could do uh, trying to do that with individual strain gauges. And then the third one over is a rectangular rosette. This one has three sensitive grids on it. You'll notice that they're labeled one, two, and three, and that's important to understand or notice the orientation of the grids on the rosette. And the reason you would select this type of strain gauge is that you're not sure direction. This strain gauge, if you take three separate measurements, it allows you to calculate your three unknowns, which are your maximum and minimum principal strains and direction. Very powerful tool for solving an unknown strain field. You gotta still get it in the right location, but the orientation of the gauge doesn't matter because this gauge, when you go through the calculations, your reference axis ends up being grid number one. So it's up to us as the installer to put grid number one in a direction that we can interpret and understand, but the data calculations doesn't really matter. You could turn it any direction you want, but just get it in the right location. And again, it allows you to solve for your principal strains and direction from the three separate measurements. And then the last one is a half bridge shear pattern. Very commonly used for really two applications. One would be torque on a shaft. You know, you got a shaft like in a paper mill and you're trying to measure uh, how much torque is going through it and maybe from the torque and from speed you can calculate uh, power or horsepower. Uh, oftentimes we'll see customers that use two of these and they'll wire them together into a full Wheatstone bridge and then they will calibrate it for torque. Also this gauge is commonly used uh, in shear uh, testing, uh, shear modulus testing, where you take a small, uh, looks like a bow tie specimen, uh, you put it into a fixture with these gauges on it, and you put it under a pure shear load, and this gauge can provide feedback for the shear strain measurement that you can use to establish what the shear modulus is of that material. 